All right, turning now to the Middle East, where the Iranian protests show no signs of stopping as we reach the four-month mark. While Iranian Americans continue to stand in solidarity with protesters in Iran, Pentagon officials warn of a possible resurgence of the Islamic State in 2023. Let's bring in our counterterrorism and foreign policy expert and the editor-in-chief of the Foreign Desk, Lisa Deftari. Lisa, great to have you with us. Um, so many moving developments right now. I want to begin with this, the the Pentagon warning that we heard about the potential new branch of ISIS making a resurgence this year again. Again, while the Department of Defense has cautioned against this announcement, I want to get your reaction. Yeah, it just points to, this is an admission, right, points to the vulnerabilities that we have uh, created and increased in the Middle East and Africa. Um, both continents really, um, you know, having these uh, vulnerabilities, having these pockets, uh, vacuums where these groups can reemerge. Uh, every time that these groups are diminished, it, it really is correlated with a strong foreign policy from Washington. I mean, you can look at the past 20 years, 30 years of these groups coming to the forefront. Um, side by side, this threat by uh, the, that was announced by the Pentagon of ISIS emerging. And remember, ISIS is a kind of a do-it-yourself type of, of terror organization, meaning they, are, they have recruits all over the world. They encourage you, even if you kill one person by using your car as a weapon, then you can become a martyr. Whereas Al-Qaeda is a much larger, kind of large-scale uh, terror group where they like to launch large attacks, surprise attacks like 9-11. On the Foreign Desk, we also reported about a couple months ago that there is a new threat by Al-Qaeda as well. So side by side, you put these together. Al-Qaeda now wants to use airplanes again, similar to what they did in 9-11. What does that mean? That means our enemies are detecting vulnerabilities. And you can go across the board more on a macro scale, whether it comes from North Korea or China or Iran's regime or Venezuela, and the list goes on and on. And of course, these terror organizations are, are smelling that weakness coming from the White House. And of course, they're going to take advantage. And what is, since the U.S. has largely pulled out of Afghanistan and again Iraq, what's been the strategy again to fight these terror groups and prevent the resurgence? Um, certainly that we're seeing it's a lot harder to combat the ideology. We know that. Right. So we rely on our proxies there, uh, especially the, the Kurds. And of course, in Iraq, we have our own assets uh, there. But what it comes down to is the loss of these relationships because of the, the current administration. And secondly, of course, as we know, the Iran regime uh, being connected to all of this because they are the largest state sponsor of terror. They have proxies throughout the world. So if you look at Iraq, if you look at Syria, if you look at the Houthis in Yemen, if you look at the uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza. You can connect the dots here. Iran has its tentacles really spreading all throughout the region. And they are, again, sensing that the uh, United States has basically lost interest in fighting them on these fronts and taking advantage again of that weakness. Lisa, speaking of that earlier this morning, uh, one news agency in Iran announcing the execution of dual Iranian British national Ali Reza Akhbari, a former high ranking defense ministry official over spying claims. They're clearly trying to send a message right now here is that they've confirmed uh, four previous executions prior to this one. Yeah, it's, it's horrific. But then you look at this and you wonder why the Europeans are not on board to put the Revolutionary Guard on their terror list or why they are not supporting regime change in Iran when you have millions of brave people inside the country telling us that they want regime change. I mean, look at these kangaroo courts, look at these executions. And then you have the mainstream media here in the United States telling us they're not going to execute thousands of people. That's bogus. They actually came out to say that. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for the death toll in Iran to be that high to support a grassroots movement that is spearheaded by women only asking for freedom? I mean, you look at the Europeans, you look at the white, the current White House, all so-called advocates and champions of human rights, of women's rights, of equality. But yet when it comes to Iran's regime, they are allowing them to carry out these executions, allowing them to continue sponsoring terror throughout the world, allowing them to cheat uh, on the their nuclear uh, examinations on their sites. And there's no consequences for Iran's regime. So, of course, they're carrying out these executions and continuing the brutality on the streets of Iran. 
Well, Lisa Deftar, you and I will continue to, again, keep an eye on the protests and, and certainly broadcast the news of what is happening in Iran, what we know uh, going forward, including on this program. We appreciate you. Lisa Deftari. Thank you. The people of Iran really appreciate the coverage. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa.